neighborhood is incredible. This is the restaurant where I'm eating in front of it. This uh, restaurant is just mind blowing. Да за ми кирам, а ми се дам и се спичам там. Ма да бъде пъснути там, да не ходите, да бъдат да бъдат да бъдат да бъдат да бъдат. Is that a nice sound or what? We are now here in the Piran Mountains. I've just driven about uh, 20 minutes outside of Bansko there, where I'm staying, and it is another 20 minute drive to the Viran Hut, which I guess is kind of be a hub for hiking. Various trails going off from there, getting into lakes and deeper into the forest. So today is going to be a day of exploring the uh, beautiful mountains of Bulgaria, getting out into nature, finding some peace and quiet. There is the rental car that is not blending in very well to the green. Just rented it today, 45 euros or $46 US per day, including all taxes and insurance. I got it for three days and then I'm planning to drop it in Plovdiv and there was an extra 60 euro charge for that so in total it was 195 euros for three days including the uh, extra drop fee there so pretty a uh, reasonable deal on the rental car and so there's a gondola going up here as well looks like that is the uh, station for it or one of them I can see more uh, cables going up there and so that is one way to uh, get around the area around Bansko here is to uh, take gondolas. I'm not sure if that is going all the way to the Viren Hut or what, but it is definitely a good idea to have a car. There are buses that go up here, but they are limited in terms of the schedule. And so here I have the ultimate freedom of a uh, automobile. So uh, let's keep on going, get deeper into the mountains.
So this is really funny. If you saw my last video, that might look familiar. That is the top of the gondola, the main gondola, coming straight out of Bansko town, which I took, that was actually two days ago. This is the ski resort. This is one of the uh, ski runs. And so I took the uh, gondola there and then wasn't really sure where I was planning to go and just decided to hike up this hill. So I hiked up here from down there and then continued up here. You can see that just crazy steep slope there and the ski lifts. And while I was hiking up the mountain there, then I had remarked on seeing a motorcycle sort of mysteriously go through the grass and then discovered the uh, road here. And so I didn't realize that I would be driving right past the same area. From here, it is only like five kilometers to the Viren hut. So potentially, if you didn't want to uh, rent a car, if you'd miss the bus, you could take the gondola there. And if you were, you know, quite a hiker and were up for a uh, intense hike, then get up here and then I'm sure it's an easy hike along the road. And then that would get you to the Viren hut. And from there, you could do further hiking up into the forests and mountains, which is what I'm planning to do right now. So, if you're curious what toilets are like in the mountains of Bulgaria, here you go. A uh, mountain restroom. I am not exactly hiking yet. This is right near a restaurant and a little camping area. Look at these mountains and forests, absolutely incredible. Whoa, way up there, another ski lift. So that must be like the uh, top run of the ski resort. So uh, I'm not exactly sure if I'm actually at the Viren hut. I think that it is up there. I'm just figuring all this out as I go along here. But uh, there are a couple of restaurants here and I'm hungry for some lunch. So I wanted to uh, stop while I have the chance and grab something to eat before I start the hike. And then I have to decide whether I'm going to stay here and there is a big uh, like stairway up there, obviously a hike there, and then I'm not sure if this path is going further up or what, so gotta, uh, you know, get some information, figure out what's happening. But uh, maybe I will end up just uh, driving a little bit further up the road. So there you can see, stairs going up. What does that go to? This is the refrigerator, <laughs> keeping the beers cold. And then here is a map. But it's all in Bulgarian, so <laughs> no idea where I am. So here is some information about the Viren Hut. Viren Hut is found in Pirin Mountain. It was built in 1939-1941 by the Bulgarian Tourist Union of Bansko at an altitude of 6,396 feet, 1,950 meters above sea level, on the left side of the rocky shore of Bundarica River. Initially the hut was called El Tepe, the old name of Viren Peak. Viren Hut is a complex of two massive two-story structures and bungalows. 
Baron Hut has a tourist kitchen, dining hall, and buffet. It has outdoor bathrooms. Baron Hut has a parking lot as well as electricity and running water. It's heated using solid fuel heaters. So this is not Baron Hut. I guess it is further up the road. So I'll plan to drive up there and then start hiking from there. So it looks like the Viren Hut is another two kilometers up the road. Not sure what the marker is indicating there, but there it says Viren Chalet. And got a bean soup. Looks really good. And this is a Tartarian meatball. So that's lunch. Gonna munch fast and then get cruising. So the meatball is really good, it's stuffed. Looks like peppers and maybe eggplant or something. The soup is pretty good, not super tasty. Well, this kind of changes things. Especially when you're wearing shorts and sandals. I do have a rain jacket, but uh, I'm not going to be the same hiking in the rain. Let's see what happens, how long this lasts. So here's the bill. That is in Bulgarian Lev. Three Lev for the soup. Six fifty for the meatball. Nine fifty Bulgarian Lev. That is just five bucks US. About five euros. Great deal. But still raining. So heading for the Viran Hut. Looks like that is a uh, hiking trail perhaps there. As you can see, just absolutely beautiful scenery here. If only the rain would stop and the sun would come out and brighten things up. Come on, I'm trying to show the best of Bulgaria here. Looks like out there must be the Viren Hut. Looks pretty spectacular. What a gorgeous valley. And look what we got here. It's time for the parting of the sheep. Will they move? This is awesome. The sea of sheep. Where is the shepherd? They're all confused, trying to figure out where to go. This is the road, guys. Not a sheep trail. I guess it's sort of both. This is not exactly what I'd imagine for the day, but that is oftentimes the way it goes. Driving through a sea of sheep in a rainstorm. There is the sheep dog. What about the sheep human? Got to be a human around. Two sheep dogs, three sheep dogs. Hello, guys. All right. The parting of the sheep sea has been successful. And so it is. On with the quest. Although, it isn't looking encouraging. Okay, not sure if this is the Viren hut or another one. It looks like this is the end of the road, so this must be it. Uh, this might be a good time for the year. There is the start of the trail. 
Ah, such a bummer. This is my last day in Bansko, unless I decide to stay further. I was planning to leave tomorrow and go to the Rilla Lakes and Monastery. But, uh... I'm really going to be missing out if I don't get up there and see more of the trees and mountains and lakes and meadows and everything else. And so guess what I have in my backpack here? Boom! Stolichno Weiss. White beer. This is a good one. Had it before. Going to uh, kick back here, chillax for a bit. Sip on this, hope for the best. Piran National Park. Bansko. Where are we? Not sure. Somewhere around here. Still raining. And it is cold. But look at these mountains, these landscapes. I can't just sit there in the car and wait forever and I'm not going to leave without a hike. So here we got six hour hike, five hours, 30 minutes. Four, four, four. I am not gonna be hiking for six hours, but let's do something. It is not ideal, but that is adventurizing. Things often do not go according to plan. So uh, let's uh, make the most of it. I've left my backpack in the car in order to, uh, you know, not end up getting it all soaking wet and I am just resigning to myself getting all soaking wet and then I'll take a nice hot shower when I get back down to my hotel and probably soak in the hot tub there. I am hydrated, had the beer, had some milk, and uh, don't really need anything else other than just to stay warm to the best of my ability here and be uh, very careful with my footsteps with uh, things getting wet and slick now. So, the title that I had planned for this video was Bulgaria, the most underrated country in Europe, question mark. just to uh, leave it open to discussion, but I really think that it should be considered as one of the lesser-known countries of Europe that is really, really worth a visit, especially if the weather cooperates. So this uh, video is not, you know, doing as good of a job as it could to really capture that just because of the weather, but uh, you can imagine With the sun shining down, this would just be absolutely ultimate. I mean, this is really some of the most beautiful mountain scenery I've seen. It just does not get much better than this. I mean, it isn't as dramatic as snow-covered Alps, not as high elevation, but just stunning views. And there is so much more to talk about in terms of why Bulgaria is a great country to visit. So Bulgaria was behind the Iron Curtain, as they say, which basically separated Western and Eastern 
Europe based on the Soviet Union and those countries that were aligned with the Soviet Union to some extent or another. Bulgaria was not part of the Soviet Union, however it had a communist government and, to the best of my understanding, did have a pretty strong alliance with the Soviet Union. Basically the point is that Eastern Europe was off-limits to the West, West of Eastern Europe. Western Europe and the United States. That isn't to say that you couldn't come here. I don't know exactly if you could just catch a flight into Bulgaria back in, you know, 1985 or whatever with an American passport or if you had to get a visa or what, I have no idea. But regardless, then this whole part of Europe was not being visited much by Americans and uh, many other citizens of countries in the uh, West. I'm sure that there was tourism from neighboring countries, but it was not on the tourist radar. We really didn't know what was here, to a great extent. It didn't have the same sort of media coverage as Western Europe. Much of the media coverage was focused on the Troubles, and so it was really quite unknown to most regular people outside of this region. Now, since the Iron Curtain fell, the Soviet Union collapsed, the communist governments in other countries, Bulgaria, Romania, Yugoslavia, etc., collapsed around the same time, then everything has changed, it has opened up much more, and many of these countries have become some of the most visited places in Europe. Prague, Croatia, Slovenia, and others that people realized it isn't all gray and bad weather and depressing and no food on the shelves and nothing much to see there. There are these incredible places in Eastern Europe that we can now go to. And so Dubrovnik, Croatia and the Croatian islands and uh, Prague and Krakow, Poland and Slovenia, the Julian Alps of Slovenia. You get the Alps along the lines of Switzerland and Austria and Italy and France, but at a fraction of the price in Slovenia. And so these places are getting more and more popular year by year. But Bulgaria here seems like it has not really gotten on the radar to the same extent as many of these other places. And so that is why I'm calling it the most underrated country of Europe, because there is really a lot to see here. Now, I haven't seen a whole lot. This is my second time to Bulgaria. The first time was in winter. It was cold and gray and a bit depressing, but it was also still very interesting. But not ideal weather conditions, but I enjoyed what I saw. Sofia, Veliko Tarnovo, and Varna over on the Black Sea. And then I came back about a week ago, visited Sofia, and then took a bus down to Bansko here. But what I've seen is very nice, very intriguing, very interesting culture, Really impressive architecture in Sofia there. Beautiful nature. And really friendly people. Almost everyone speaks English very well and the prices. So a lot of these other countries are getting expensive, man. Go to Croatia, 
Check the prices there. And overcrowded Dubrovnik Old Town is probably just an absolute zoo right now, packed with people. But uh, Bulgaria has not, you know, gotten that same attention, I guess, partly because there isn't, like, that one thing that really makes it stand out in a unique way. I can't really, like, name, you know, this one thing that you really have to see. India has its Taj Mahal. Peru has its Machu Picchu. Paris has, you know, so much. There are great sights to see here in Bulgaria, but nothing like super famous that, you know, grabs people's attention and has that especially unique wow factor, whatever. But it does have a lot of amazing things to see without the crowds at super reasonable prices. You saw my lunch there, my dinner last night. I have an amazing four-star hotel room in a great hotel with a uh, big pool, hot tub, sauna for $43 a night, including tax. $43 to be in the mountains is just ridiculously cheap. Sofia is a really interesting city. It has this really like relaxed vibe compared to a lot of capital cities. It is quite attractive. It doesn't have like a huge number of sites in the same way as Paris, London, Rome, Amsterdam, but there is quite a bit to see there. Great selection of restaurants at great prices. A really like hip, cool culture a unique culture and history that is in some senses more pure than a lot of other countries in Western Europe that have been more popular in terms of tourism, kind of more maybe Americanized. I haven't noticed much in the way of like McDonald's and Burger King and Kentucky Fried Chicken and all this kind of stuff. I can't recall if I've ever seen one. Probably there's McDonald's in Sofia, but you don't see as much of that. There is much more of the Bulgarian restaurants, even if it's maybe Bulgarian fast food or whatever. It hasn't been as affected by outside influences. It just kind of has this feeling of being authentically Bulgarian. And so there are really a lot of reasons to come here, including that view. Just imagine on a nice sunny day. This is ultimate nature. So, unfortunately, my battery in my camera is about to die. I have another battery that is in my backpack that I left in the car. I am really disappointed to not be doing a more intense hike here but it is just not the same walking through puddles and being wet and feeling cold. I had the air conditioning on in the car when I was driving up here. It was warm and sunny. I really was not expecting things to get this wet and this cold, but that is life in the mountains, even if it is the middle of summer. So uh, at least I was still able to get out here and get a taste of it, see what it's like, see this just gorgeous, gorgeous valley. There are lakes back in here. I'm going to hike a little further and hope that I have a little bit of battery left to capture a little more of the uh, scenery up the trail.